Hello there, adventurers. It's Neon here, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play series. Today, we are going to be beginning the start of our Let's Play of Cloudpunk, released in, I believe, 2020 by the developer Ion Lands. Uh, Cloudpunk is a narrative adventure game where you take on the role as a character named Rania, who has just moved to the cyberpunk sci-fi city of Nivalis, taking up a job as a delivery driver for the service called Cloudpunk. And so that's where we are right now. We're here at the very beginning of the game with some introductions on uh, how to drive and stuff like that, so pretty basic. One of the things that I really love about this game is that the game also features first-person views. Uh, which is how we'll be playing. It didn't launch like this. Originally, when the game launched, it only had this third-person view, and it was locked, so you couldn't even, like, look, move around with it. Um, but we can unlock the camera now. We can have first-person, and so that's how I prefer it. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, let us begin our journey in Cloudpunk. All right, so we'll just uh, do a bit of driving around, go forward a bit, get familiar with the controls. And soon enough, people should start talking. Control, come in. This is, wait, is this channel receiving me? Uh, driver of 14 FC, this is Control. We read you. Is that you, Carmine? No, my name is Rania. No, oh, you're the new kid. I'm the new driver, yeah. Who is Carmine? He was driver 14FB. What happened to him? He, he retired last month. Good for him. Not really. He was in the big Sector 6 crash last week. Lots of people got retired. Don't worry, you won't be flying through that section for hours yet. Where do I go now? Well, how are you handling your hava? Okay, I guess. I read your references. You're a good driver, but navigating a hava around Nivalis isn't like driving your flat country roads back home. Now, this city goes down a hundred miles and up a thousand. Remember, you're not driving an old internal combustion engine. You'll need to engage your vertical repulsors or find one of the car lifts. Fly to headquarters. I'll give you more instructions when you arrive. Thanks, Control. Uh, one more thing, 14FC. Welcome to Cloudpunk. Alright, so we have our first task to go to Cloudpunk HQ. We actually uh, kind of just de facto started getting pretty close to it. We're only 300-some meters away. But, uh, but yeah, we take the game takes place in this floating city, like uh, Control said. The city goes down very far and goes up v very high as well. Uh, with these Hova, Hova cars, um, you don't have to just stick to the roads that are on the minimap over there. Uh, there's, as you can see, there's sort of like laid out roads and stuff. You don't have to stick to them. You can just kind of fly off and uh, and be free. That's kind of the uh, the joy of having floating cars, right? Um, the the thing that you get if you do follow these roads, or specifically these ones here that have like this little um, haze about them, once you enter them, your speed increases when you're going on these. Your speed goes faster, but there's a lot of traffic through here, so you can actually get your Hava pretty banged up if you're not uh, if you're not careful. And uh, as you can see down there, we also have a little uh, gas gauge underneath the. Uh, what is our, our money count. So we have to uh, keep this thing topped up with gas throughout the game as well. So I know I've flown away from where Cloudpunk is, but just wanted to show you around a little bit and uh, get get uh, you a bit more acclimated to what life in Cloudpunk kind of looks like. So let's go ahead and go back over to Cloudpunk HQ where we should be able to get our first delivery. This whole game is supposed to take place during the course of just one night, really, so... 
It's uh, Rania's first night as a Cloudpunk driver. So we'll get to see what she experiences. As we're coming up on Cloudpunk HQ up here on the right. Exit here. And here we go. There's the Cloudpunk building. And then there's some parking spots right down here. Yeah, we get a little uh, a little camera there that helps us find where the parking spot is. But uh, we're good here, so we can press park. And uh, once again, the game initially started off in this sort of third fixed side camera view. Uh, we don't have to do that anymore. We can go into a third person view, a true third person view here. That you're able to kind of see Ronnie and how she looks. Uh, the the game is voxel based, which is why it has uh, sort of all those blocks and stuff like that, which I think gives it a really unique and distinct art style and atmosphere. Um, but we're going to go all the way in into the eyes of Rania. All right, so we need to. We're here at Cloudpunk. We need to go and pick up a package. Let's see here. Is that it? This is it. Pick up payload. 14 FC. This is going to the Marrow. Where's that? Pretty low in the city superstructure. I'll give you a waypoint on your navcom to help you find it. Be careful down there. It's busy and it's a maze. Not exactly the rich part of town. The kind of place where you wipe your feet on the way out. Okay. Carminus was a great driver. You got big boots to fill. He flew delivery for over 10 years, you know? How about the driver before him? 14 FA? <laughs> Lasted one night. <laughs> Most drivers only last one night. They quit the job? One way or another, yeah. You seem like a nice kid, 14 FC. I hope you make it. Don't get lost down there in the marrow. I'll try. What's in the package? Two rules, kid. Don't miss a delivery, and don't ask what's in the package. Everything else is just guidelines. All right, so um, this game is, this Let's Play is going to take on a bit different of a format than the other Let's Play that we have going on currently with the Outer Worlds. Uh, this being a bit more of a narrative-focused adventure, and we don't really have op opportunities for dialogue or character building and stuff like that. For the most part, whenever... Uh, things are happening. I'm going to be kind of sitting back and letting uh, the story sort of play out for itself, um, providing commentary where I think it's appropriate. But for the most part, if you're familiar with my Outer Worlds Let's Play, it might uh, come across as a bit different. I was just over here checking out all of these uh, these extra Hava cars that they have for Cloudpunk drivers, I'm presuming. Or maybe these are all broken. Who knows? I think it's interesting how much detail, how many de little details there are um, that you can see here in this first person mode and the third person mode. Whereas like a lot of these details I feel like would be so missed and uh, like not obvious here in this uh, original mode. So I think it was definitely a, uh, a great move to add a first person mode by the, by Ion Lands. And I think it's, really telling that the uh, the developers, their next game is just called Navalis, which is going to be a sort of slice of life um, life simulator here in the city that their basic camera angle is first person. So I think that they have uh, agreed as well that first person just adds a completely new dynamic and element to this game. Like being able to look up at the sky there and, and everything like that. So Let's get uh, going on this delivery. We don't want to miss a delivery. That was one of the rules, right? All right, so let's take off here. Get going, maybe turn around here. All right, here we go. The atmosphere in this game is kind of unparalleled when it comes to some cyberpunk games I played like this kind of captures the feeling of uh, being in Blade Runner a bit more than a lot of other games do, I think. Uh, there's a reviewer that I watched that reviewed Cloudpunk. I can't remember 
what his name was exactly, but he specifically points out the scene in Blade Runner where Deckard is uh, um, being flown or sort of flying into the uh, the police headquarters where there's a, just like feeling of isolation as he just watches as the he's being taken in. Um, that feeling, I feel like, is really well captured in this game by just kind of cruising around, but... Right, we need to go this way. Cloudpunk also has a DLC uh, called City of Ghosts, which is basically as big, if not a little bigger, than the base game, and uh, is just as good. It is great. I highly recommend both to anybody that's interested. All right, let's see if we can navigate through some of this traffic. And we're getting a call. Hey, uh, 14 MC, are you there? I just remembered I didn't talk to you about the Ascenders. I think I know how they work, Control. You do? They go up and also down, right? Yeah, that's about it. You know why? No. It's about vert ceilings. Not those again. <laughs> Say again, 14 FC. Sorry, just making a kind of joke. Go ahead, Control. Hoffas are tuned to a vertical field frequency based on the layer of the city they're in. That field locks you to a maximum and minimum altitude. That's why you need the ascenders. They take you up or down the layer, and as they carry you, they reset your Hoffa's field frequency. They reset the vertical ceiling and floor. But Havas fly just fine outside Novalis without vert fields. Well, that's true. Your Hava will fly fine in areas without the fields. Even in old ruined parts of the city that are off the grid. But the grid holds everything together in the city. Tracks you, gives you access to the nets, the comm, the mapping systems, and the reserve power if your engine stalls. And it stops us just flying straight up to the spire too, right? That's right, kid. The CEOs don't want you flying up and looking in their windows. They prefer their privacy. I guess we don't get many jobs up there anyway. You might be surprised, kid. All right, so I deliberately waited waited to go through the, the gate there. I wasn't quite sure if I remembered how... Oh my gosh, we are just <laughs> getting into some wrecks. Oh, goodness. This is why most drivers only last one night. Oh my goodness. Um, I couldn't remember how it deals with dialogue going through those loading screens. If it continues through or if it kind of messes things up. So I just wanted to be sure and not have any of that dialogue mess up. So that's what that was about. And overall, one thing that's just really nice about this game is just the overall laid back and chill atmosphere of just driving around and delivering stuff. It kind of makes me wish there was a sandbox mode where you just got a whole bunch of, like, random deliveries and drove them around. There isn't that, though, unfortunately. Once you go through the story, you're kind of, kind of done. Okay, so it looks like we'll need to land here and park. Okay. Alright, so this is the marrow. Interesting. And down there on the mini-map, you can see... You might be able to see several things. Several icons. There's a bunch of different, like, things you can pick up that are marked on the map. Like, these are just, like, um, random items that you can pick up and sell um, for money. Money can be used to upgrade your apartment. Um... And you also, you know, you need to get gas and stuff. There's merchants here. There's a little bit of a, like, um... What you looking for? Whatever it is, I got it. There's a little bit of a, a mini game in the sense that you can... Uh, there's a bit of a market and economy going on. So that you can find stuff that are buy low, sell high, that kind of thing. To try and maximize, you know, your profits. Um, so there's a bit of that once you're done Thanks. with the game. I don't really hey, need anything. Any time, lady. Okay, sounds good. But, uh, for the most part, um, it's, the main use of money is gas and your apartment, I would say. 
Um, there are, there's also different icons there on the map for that indicate different people that you can talk to. Um, so on your way to these um, deliveries, sometimes it's fun to just kind of stop by and see what people have to say. So let's talk to Trixie Dio. Did you try the okonomiyaki? The wukka wukka Isn't what? Isn't that a pancake? Right! With fish flakes! Oh, it's to die for! I wouldn't trust the fish flakes here in Novalis. Would you like to appear on my food review channel? It's on all the nets. We're looking for people to react to different stimuli. Can you pretend to be sick on cam? <laughs> what? No. There's a free meal in it for you. Or would you pretend to be really annoyed? Our viewers love that. I am annoyed. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you get you get a lot of nice flavor from talking with the people in the world. You unfortunately don't get to like interact with them by way of uh, um, choosing dialogue and stuff like that, but you get to flesh, get to hear more of Rania's personality and that uh, feel her fleshed out and stuff. Here's another thing we can pick up. Uh, punch card. Interesting. Alright, but we need to go this way. Deliver payload to Erwin Carva in the Marrow. Hello, Erwin. Oh, thank God. This will change everything. Where do I sign? Right here, Mr. Carva. B please, call me Erwin. It's from my parents. They died, you know. Cora only knows what caused the crash. I'm sure they saved their whole life to give this to me. I, I thought it would be in cash. Limbs. But my neighbor said they'd probably leave me pressed gold. That way... You don't pay so much city tax on the transfers. Can I take that now? Sure. Here you go. Who is Cora? It's just an expression. Y you want to see what's inside? I can maybe give you a tip if it's limbs. Not every day you see someone become rich in front of your <laughs> eyes, right? Just okay. Think. I can finally get the eye surgery I need. Two augments. No expense spared. I can hardly read the holocrons these days. It's all just a blur. Let's see. Just rip here and... Oh. What is it? Gold? It's... Old toys. My ship models. The R7 ICBM. And Sputnik. The NASA shuttles. The UN Interplanetary 101. Why did they send these? It must be some kind of code. There's a note, right? Yeah, let's see. Dear Erwin, we know these toys were important to you at one time. We need to sell the apartment, but your father has a scheme. It seems risky, but if all goes well, this will arrive just before we land at the colonies. We're going to the stars, just like we always dreamed. I know it's hard out there. But if we keep our heads down, we can start sending you money for the operations. More than enough money. Just hold on, honey. Everything's going to be okay. Sorry. I should go. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So in interacting with a lot of the people here in Novalis, you kind of get the feeling and understanding that everybody's kind of living a bit of a tough life as is typically the case in these sort of cyberpunk settings. Now we're getting a call from Control. Good job, kid. I looked into your profile. It says you came from the Eastern Peninsula. Heard it's nice there. What made you want to come slumming with us in Novalis? It's the biggest city in the world. I wanted to make an impression. It's not easy to break out in Novalis, kid. Making it here is like trying to paint on the surface of a river. The current of people and ideas and the crowds, they, they wash everything away. I'll make it. Sure you will, kid. Just try making it through tonight first. We need you to head up to the mercantile district. You're moving up in the world. What's the job? Same as always. Take a package from A to B without too many questions. A is a warehouse. B is a penthouse. Transmitting nav points now. And remember... Don't let them look down on you, kid. The merchants are as far from the clouds as they are from the gutter. Okay, Control. On my way. 
Yes, but first I wanted to go back to this merchant. See if he had anything to drink. Getting a bit thirsty on this delivery service, you know? What you looking for? Whatever it is, I got it. Um Yeah, let's have a uh let's get a candy bar and an energy drink. And one of those. Thank you, thank Thanks. you. Hey, come back anytime, lady. There's also a lot of these like food shops you can get food and stuff. Which I think is really cool. So let's get sweet. Yeah, it's all right. And uh who's this engineer? Hello? Hey you. I need to ask you a question. I'm busy. I just need a minute. I'm a structural engineer, and I'm trying to make sure we don't have another disaster like in Sector 18. You're not too busy to help prevent that, are you? I don't know how I can help you. I just make deliveries. You're driving all the time? You see a lot of the city? This is actually my first night on the job. Ah, still, you've probably seen a lot already. Sure. It seems like the city is falling apart. Can't you guys do anything? And we're trying. The whole infrastructure is plasteel built on top of concrete, held together with ancient rivets and materials we don't even have names for anymore. The computer systems are so ancient they've gone senile. No one knows how everything is still working or how to know when it stops working. The city is held together with, with duct tape and hopes and dreams. How did things get so bad? It's always been like this. These disasters have been a, a long time coming. Can't you fix it? Fix what? The accidents. The city. <laughs> you have no idea. The engineers are powerless now. With my colleagues, it's all superstition and ritual. They talk with AIs that stopped talking back a thousand years ago. They press buttons and switches that could make everything better or worse. Or they might do nothing at all. They're like monkeys trying to operate a satellite array with a broken computer terminal. I'm the last real engineer. The only scientist among them all. So how am I supposed to help? Well, if you see any street signs blink three times and then turn red, come tell me, okay? <laughs> sure. What does that mean, though? Uh, probably nothing. But if you see them flash blue, well... That means trouble, so get out of there. Blue? You said red the first time. Oh, yeah. Uh, blue or red. Either one. What about other colors? No. Blue or red is bad. Anything else means there's no problems. Uh, unless it's green or orange. And if they turn purple, well, that doesn't really matter. Mm. Why not? And if they turn purple, well... It's too late for you to do anything anyway. Okay. I love how these characters walk directly into me after getting on talking to them and just push me out of the way. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, there's an elevator there that could take us up there, but uh, I think we better get going on a, another one of these deliveries. There's a decent bit of exploration that you can do in this game. Um... That's really worthwhile just for the vibes and for the uh, getting to hear more of the characters and stuff like that. Load Hova AI. Load Assistant. Load Computer. Helper. Do you want to activate the generic automata? Yes, that's the one. Automata now available in generic limited mode. How can I help you today, sir? Not sir. My name is Rania. How can I help you today, Mr. Rania? I'm not a mister. <laughs> Update my profile, please. Profile changes are locked in the trial generic automata. Would you like to upgrade to my limited offer, monthly subscription, premium mode? Oh, now, God. just how much to replace you with an existing AI? Do you have a hard copy of the AI on storage media? I do. Then the transfer cost to unlock the automata is 1,500 limbs, sir. How would you like to pay? 1,500 limbs? Transfer. Jesus. Please insert storage media. 
transfer in process. All right, we're going to see what Automata happens when we go Canis through these. Will be activated in approximately 20 minutes. Would you like to deactivate the So it fades out. Does it fade back in where it stopped though? Eric Automata personality now. Yes. Deactivating. Please enjoy your new automata. Good day, Mr. Rania. <laughs> okay, so going through the uh, the gates doesn't do too much, so we'll be able to do that in the future. Oh, gosh. Let's go off this way. A bit off-road there. Er, however you would call that. Okay, so where is parking for this place? Over here. There we go. There we go. Get parked. And now we go. As I was saying, yeah, there's a lot of uh, exploration that can be done, and there's a few little side quest type of things that you can partake in. For the most part, I don't know how much I'm going to engage in all of that, because there's a lot of different characters you can talk to. And it might just, it's, it could end up taking just a ton of time finding everything, so. I'll do what's sort of in our immediate vicinity, but otherwise I very strongly recommend you play the game to be able to experience a lot of that for yourself as well. Hello there. You the delivery driver? Yes. yes. I'm from Cloudpunk. Cloudpunk? All right, here's the package. Don't open it, don't ask me about it, and don't be late. And before you ask, yes, it's supposed to smell like that. Okay, thanks. Is this real meat? What did I just say? <laughs> yeah. What did I just say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in, 14FC. How are you handling the Hava so far? Hello, this is 14FC. Yes, everything is totally fine. Relax, kid, you'll get the hang of it. What's giving you the most trouble? The traffic? Yeah, and how fast everyone drives. They all know exactly where they're going. You'll be that fast once you get your bearings. Faster even. Just remember, the highways channel an induction loop through your Hava. Right. It's pretty simple. When you're on the highways, it's like the road is moving under you. You'll get a big speed boost. Use the highways to get as close to your destination as you can, and then cut off when you're close. I can only park in the bays, right? That's right. Havas aren't meant to touch the ground. The repulsors on the parking bays keep the undercarriage a few centimeters off the ground. It's not just a technical restriction. Corpsec defines the parking around the city to maximize traffic flow. I guess that's a good thing for us. And them too. Uh, traffic jams seize up the wheels of commerce. If Corpsec have one priority, it's making sure business continues as usual. Yeah, so there was the explanation there from the actual game about how thing you go faster during these in these areas. I forgot that it actually told you about that. But that makes sense. Okay. How are we on gas? We're still okay on gas. Only about a third has been taken out so far. Oh boy. Alright, we're coming alongside something on the left is where things are. And we need to find parking. We're in Upper Midtown now, we, so we need to go up higher. Here's a parking lot. Okay. Come down here. We got an open spot right here? Yes, we do. Park the vehicle. Alright. Deliver the payload to Mr. DeBeer. 
as we can do that. Mr. DeBeer, I've got your delivery, sir. It smells like meat, some some gabagool. I have your delivery. Give it here. It says I'm to deliver to Mr. DeBeer. That's my employer. Give it to me this instant. Hey, street rat, has this been tampered with? What? No. Good. Most drivers ask what's in the package. Hmm. The smell makes them curious. What's in the package? <laughs> Dinner. Meat. From which animal? What a strange question. Good day. <laughs> Good day.